Evening everybody. Well, it seems like uh, months ago since the last time I was there uh, recording, but um, hopefully we'll get a, a little bit done today. It's now uh, just on tea time here in the North East and the rain has just knocked off. It's been absolutely tipping down all day, but it's, it's mild in the fault, so it's not too cold. So I'm not really bored. Um, what I've been con trying to concentrate on this week is uh, doing a lot of potting off, or potting on, as uh, a lot of people say. Now I've had uh, various comments on the internet uh, about different things, so I want to try and get a get a few of them things out of the way first. Um, Chris Pugh, hi Chris. Hope you're fine down there in lovely Wales. Um, tomorrow's. Now I did send you some American ones down, and I sent you some Spanish ones down, and I think that's both them in the trays. Well, my Spanish ones are sitting here, but uh, just a, a recap is what I says. Uh, don't worry about the size of them. Uh, these are Nimbus. I only had five seed. I got these a free gift. As I say, I like to try a different uh, variety um, every year. And they are I'm still sitting there. Now I'll pot them up tomorrow. They'll go into, or I might pot them up tonight actually. They'll go into a little pot like that. Don't worry about your tomatoes. They'll be fine. Um, I always say a sign of a good tomato that's been grown is just the checking the seedling leaves. If the seedling leaves are still there, when you're potting up and you've got a nice solid plant before you plant out, you know it's been well grown. But they're, they're flying away. No problem. Uh, they've got a good sized pot. There's no root coming out the bottom yet, so well, there's a little bit there. But I'm not really panicking yet because there's enough nutrients in that to keep them little tums growing until I'm ready to start potting off. But I will do a few of them tonight. Um, and I hope that gets your question out of the way. I will show you. This is my second lot of uh, Spanish tomatoes. Uh, the first lot's up the allotment. Now there we are, they're in the tray. And I think they're just about exactly the same as yours, Chris. Uh, just sitting there quite nicely. Now I like to wait, as I say, until the second two leaves on my tomatoes are well out. And that's by them, by that standard, where have I put them tomatoes? By that standard, uh, <laughs> oh, there is that. There's your first two leaves there, and there's your second stem with your main stem just coming up. And I think that, to me, that's a perfect time to pot a tomato up. It's got a good root, so if you've got a good amount of compost and a nice new pot for it to go into, and it'll thrive away. Um, as I say, I don't like it getting too big, but to me that's just a nice size for potting on. So I hope I've answered your question. Um, don't worry about yours at the moment, Chris. They're growing just nice. Um, now, Nancy Ariel. Hiya, Nancy. Uh the yellow sulfur again. Right, well, tonight it's perfect because um, um, Joyce Hennigwin asked us last night on the, um, on the internet about um, strawberries. Which is dividing some of the old plants. That's fine, Joyce. Um, uh, Joyce is down in the southwest of England. Lovely area again. Uh, yes, division, it's easy. Um, get yourself a good set of forks, or if you want, use a knife. But um, just remember, when you're dividing anything, um, is to leave, especially with strawberries, is to leave a good part of the crown on each section. If you're only dividing into two, it's not so bad. If you're going to try and divide it into three or four parts, if it's a really big clump, just make sure each clump that you divide has got a little bit of the old crown on, because that's where your, your new growth is going to come from. Um, when you when you when you divide them, give them a good clean up, take as much of the old soil off, and if it is any parts uh, where you've broke away, that's shown a bit of root, just give them a dusting of yellow sulphur. Now this is um, one of the questions Nancy Ariel had asked about the yellow sulphur in its uses. It's great for that. If you haven't got um, yellow sulphur juice, don't bother. Uh, don't worry about it. All you need to do is a little bit of juice fluid in the water and give your, give your strawberry plant a good wash with that before you replant it in its new position. Um, nice, well rich muck. Get it in and soak them in. And uh, you shouldn't have any frosts this time of the year. Pardon me, down in the south first. So um, I wouldn't worry about that. But yeah, divide it, spray it, or clean it, wash it, get it in, give it a good soaking, and it'll, they'll fly away, no problem. Um, as you know, I like to take my strawberries by the, by the cuttings every year. Now, I've just been up the allotment this morning, I got taken up again by car, and uh, the strawberries are absolutely thriving. Uh, in fact, some of them have got the flowers on. So what I'll do tomorrow, I'll start a new video off next week. 
and I'll, I started up the plot and I'll get a few photographs of, um, of what we've been doing up there or what I've tried to be doing as much as what I can but um, I will do that uh, as I say, yellow yeah, sulphur for any plants that are dividing now with my dahlias at the back end here I always like to, when I dig my dahlias up if there's any parts that's been wounded or rotten I like cut them away and give them a good dusting with the yellow sulphur once again, it's a good protection there Nancy it cleans the wound and it, it, it it helps um, stop any rot or infestation creeping into it. Um, here's another good one. There's my gladiolus off last year. Um, just taking them out because this is a perfect time to start planting. Um, if you have grown for shown, usually around about the end of April. But um, as you know, with uh, the problems I've had this year, I'll not be shown. I'll maybe be able to pop a couple of leaks in the show and that'll be it. But uh, I'll not be showing any flowers this year. I'm far too behind. I've got my croissants cutting in there. I haven't been in a hurry to put them on, uh, on the heat. So I'm just quite happy just there uh, waiting until next year. But I've taken my gladiolis out of there, uh, out of storage. And uh, the bulbs, of course. And there we are. And I've managed to save quite a few. As I say, when you come to... When you come to store gladiolis, yeah, you can store them in sawdust or uh, just ordinary peat if you want. Dry peat. And it just keeps them nice and clean. But that's the old skin removed from the gladioli. And that what I'll do on the base, I'll give that a dust with yellow sulphur. So there again, it's another good use. But um, anything you're dividing, any plants. Uh, another good one, Nancy, is for seed. If you keep them seed at the end of the year, I keep a lot of seed. Uh, marigold, tomato seed. A lot of your favourite flowers if you want to save the seed. Dry your seed out. And then again, before you put them in an envelope, just give them a little dusting of yellow sulphur. And that keeps them nice and clean over the winter in the, in the envelopes. So I hope um, I hope that answers your question, Nancy, about um, some of the uses of yellow sulphur. Um, and yes, Joyce, get a strawberries divider by all means, pet. Um, as I say, a bit of yellow sulphur or a bit of just flowed in the water, or even a, a, a touch of domestus. Um, just a very light dosing in some warm water, and that'll do exactly the same thing. It'll give them a clean up before you put them in their new land. Um, what I would suggest is that when you dig your strawberries up, don't put them in the same plot where you had them. Um, because uh, after a while, the soil gets a bit uh, depleted. And that's why I always change my strawberry beds around in the buckets. Um, so don't plant them where you had them. Put them in another pot if you can, which is nice and rich, full of compost. And uh, they should gallop away, no problem. But uh, yeah, that's another one out of the way. That's, uh, as I say, any combs, bulb seeds, give them a uh, bit of yellow sulphur and uh, they should go away no problem right now I'm just gonna once again I'll get these out of the way yes my tomatoes are flying up um, I've got absolutely thousands of bedding plants to pot off um, and that's all at the moment I can do uh, geraniums I've got uh, about four or five trays of them to do I've got the um, Fantastic tree, Swan River Daisy, and they're perfect now. Um, this time of year, first week in March, fantastic. Always track time my plants, you know when I saw these, end of February, beginning of March, never in a hurry, just nice and cool, and they're perfect now for potting on. So what will happen now is we're getting potted on tonight. Um, we're in the first week of April, so we've got five weeks now, and that's going to take up the second week in May. I say that to everybody, your timing's, you know, get your timing right, and you shouldn't have any problem with your plants. Uh, once I put these into the multi-cell trays, which I'll show you soon, I'll put the um, the camera on a little tripod I've got there, and I'll show you how to put them on, or how I like to put mine on. Um, and they're going to be sitting in them trays now for five weeks. Um, what I like to do is, uh, if they do start and get a bit, um, a bit wilty through uh, lack of feed, I water the trays underneath with a, little, a very weak diluted manure juice or some uh, comfrey and uh, they'll pick them up no end but they're going to sit in them trays for at least five weeks which they'll take into the second week in May which is round about the time we, we should start and get frost free conditions if I think it's uh, if I put all my baskets up and uh, and I think it's still going to be cold I'll hang the hanger baskets in the polytunnel which will be quite safe to sit in there for a couple of weeks but uh, that's the idea as, as, as I keep saying to everybody timing's everything get your timing right you just count, count your weeks away. You know how long your seedlings are going to grow. You know how long they're going to be in the trees. 
and you can work it out and you get your timing spot on. You don't want to be sitting with a greenhouse full of plants um, at the beginning of April, massive, struggling to go out and it's freezing cold. So if you get your timing right, you shouldn't have a problem. But uh, we'll put them to one side for the moment and I'll get stuck into these couple of tomato plants. So as, as I say, these are the free trial and Nimbus. Um, are, uh, I try different tomatoes every year. Um, it's just a trial run. These ones, I'm going to I'm going to use one of these for outsider. Um, I've read up on them, and they're they're indoor or outdoor. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to put one of them in the, the trail of three, along with the along with the uh, in the Elta Creek, because the Elta Creek will grow outside, no problem as long as you give them a little bit of shelter, especially up north. I've seen tomatoes growing outside down south when I visited people down there and they've had them in the gardens. We're not that fortunate, we're not that lucky. We have the greenhouse, but um, up north here, yeah, if you want to try some outside on a south facing wall, not a problem. We'll try it. We'll give it a go anyway and we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to knock this pot out. And then here I've got five, as I say, I've got five ceilings. And look at them roots, that, that pot is absolutely full of root. So that's fantastic. I'm well pleased with that. It, um, they've got a good rate up, as I say, they were free packed of seeds, so I like everything for free, me, if I can get away with it. But there we are, that's a beautiful young little tomato. Um, when you are potting off, if you want to pot off um, when your ceiling leaves come up, by all means do, but also remember to pick them up by the ceiling leaf, never by the grown leaf, never by the stem. You never pick anything up by the stem. You break that, you pull a leaf off, it'll grow away again. If you break a stem, forget about it. So I'll just pop that in that pot, and my compost is my own homemade compost from the allotment, which I'll put all my pottons, never seedlings, seedlings always go to multi-purpose compost, chop sand, and there we are. Look that, Chris, perfect tomato, and he'll sit there now for another three weeks, as I say, I'm never in any hurry to get them moved on, he'll sit there quite happy. Um, the rest I can do later on. Uh, I'm just going to give you a, a little peek at him. He's a sink to him every night. That's one of my Russian giants. I know he's not big, but he's got a perfect set of seed leaves. There we are. Still on good. So he's had no check. He hasn't been dried. He hasn't been overwatered. He hasn't been overheated or stretched. He's got a perfect set of new leaves coming on the top there. And what I'm pleased about most, when you look underneath, he's got a cracking set of roots on the bottom there. And that's what I like. I always say, I never worry about what's on top. I worry about what's underneath first. You work on them roots, get that root system going. Really nice and big. I'll probably pot him up next week. Because he's just filling, starting to fill his pot up. So I'm never in a hurry. And that'll only go into a 9 centimetre pot, which is... Uh, 11 centimetre pot, which is that size. Never any bigger, never over pot. Um, so it just keeps them happy. All I want is a bit of fresh compost, to f refresh our roots, not too big a pot, and uh, they'll grow away quite happy. And uh, yeah, I'm pleased with them. I've got two or three of them. I'm going to put a couple more in next week. A um, couple of specials. Not the Russian giants. But that's them. Um, out the way now. Right, as I say, I've got um, countless trays of ceilings to get started on. Um, here's another one. Now, this is one of my favourites. Um, Mess and Brian Thummum, which is, of course, a lovely little daisy. Um, they open when the sun shines and the close of an evening. They're absolutely gorgeous. They can be a bit tricky, but once again, I saw them in lines, in three lines. Reason being, uh, they're, a, they're a more or less like a succulent, you know, like a um, like a cactus, or a, um, a very soft, well-filled plant with water. Um, so when you repot these, you've got to be very careful with them, that you don't damage them. Sometimes when you pull on the leaves, the, the leaves will just snap away because they're so full of water. But um, if you go easy with them, I grow them every year, the Livingston Daisy. Um, but they are semi succulent so just be careful with them. And that's why, once again, I like to grow them in three rows, uh, three nice rows, and it makes it life a lot easier for this time now when you're potting on, which I'll show you in a minute, 
and um, I'll show you by this um, by this other row of the of the other daisies, the Swan River daisy. Of course, the Swan River daisy being for the baskets, and the the missing Bryanthemum, the Livingston daisy being for the gardens. I always like to put these on the side of the gardens, but as I say, they're fantastic. They open up in the sunshine and the close of an evening, and uh, I think they're one of the loveliest little bedding plants you can grow. But um, that's them um, for the time being. So what I'll do, I'm just going to knock the camera off. I'm going to finish off them tomatoes later on. Um, I've been I've been busy putting off I've been busy putting off petunias and begonias and God knows what this week. Now there's a tray full of the Emmy tumblers, tumbler toms, and there we are. That's a that's a full tray. There's 30 seed in there, and they've all come through. And that's now, as you can see, that's the size I love to pot off. I'm never in any hurry to pot tomatoes off. And they're not they're struggling by you know, no means in among this um, plants that's in one little single tree like that. They're as healthy as anything. They're nice and dark green, they're lovely. And they're just coming up a second leaves as you can see. Now they'll be potted off tomorrow afternoon into small cups. Um just small cups like that. They'll go into them or small square pots and they they'll sit under the, the covers again, under these plastic covers. For another week or two down here, as I say, the temperature is only—it's only 60 in here. I've just turned that light off, um, but uh, it's 60 in here, and it's—it's it's lovely and comfortable. Well pleased with. Um, so that's the tomatoes, as I say. Don't be in a hurry, in, don't you hurry, Chris, to put them up. Um, just keep an eye on them. That, they're fine, and that's what you should end up with. Nice little, nice little plant with that. Now, before I knock off the night, I'm just going to—I'm going to put the camera over here, and I'm going to show you how I like to put up. Uh, some of my plants, some of my little bedding plants, because uh, I'll be I'll be working on that all this week, bedding, bedding, and more bedding, and hopefully I should have these finished by um, by next week, and then I'm going to get started in the garden. I've got uh, parsnips to go out. I'm a couple of weeks late, but um, hey ho, I'll uh, I'll get some parsnips put in. Uh, early teas have just started popping through in the tunnel, but once I start next week's video off, I'll uh, I'll get up the lot and I'll show you how how we're getting on up there, but. As I say, I managed to get up this morning, had a look at the strawberries, and I'm over the moon with them. They're grown great. What I will be doing tomorrow, um, if I can manage it, or tonight, I'll make a little garlic spray up, because um, what I want to do with the garlic spray, a garlic spray is a preventive. It, it, it won't kill anything. It prevents them from, all it is, it gives them a bad taste in their mouth. So hopefully it'll stop them from the likes of green fly and that, from, uh, from getting on the plant to start with, and starting to, uh, to breed on your plant. It's a preventive measure. Um, it won't kill anything, but it'll, it'll certainly leave a bad taste in the mouth, and hopefully it'll distract them from eating your plants. But um, as I say, there's a couple of signs of flowers just coming on some of the strawberries, so it's imperative that I get up tomorrow. Get a spray made up and get a bloody good spray. Either a, um, as I say, either a garlic spray, or I might make up, um, if I could get a hold of a little rhubarb leaf, that's up the top there, maybe just put a little bit of that in. Just a light mix, yeah, very light. Plenty of soapy water. And give them a good spray with that. As I say, give them a good spray now before your flowers come on, and then that should keep them nice and clean over the next few weeks. As I say, we're going to have to start opening the doors in the tunnel to let, to let, their, um, let the flies and the bugs and the bees in, and they'll, hopefully they'll pollinate with strawberries. And uh, the next four to five weeks, we shall be pulling some nice red strawberries off with a bit of luck. Okay, so I'm just going to swap you over on the other side, and I'm going to get cracking on some of these uh, some of these daisies. I'll be able to manage to get a couple of these potted off before I knock off any. Right, well, I hope you're still with us. Um, Multi cell trees, use these all the time. Absolutely fantastic. That's my mix. As, as you know, my garden mix, I brought a little bit of this down, a few bags of this down, and all I've did with this, I've added a little bit of um, pure light to that. That's just, all it is, just to lighten it up a little bit. <coughs> and these are me, it's the same as Swan River daisies. Now it's uh, one of the easiest jobs in the world is for potting on. <coughs> and all I need to do is a small paste of this, and with these, the, um, the Swan River daisy, I like to just put them off in little groups. Um, if you just go easy, that's why I put them in the line. They're so much easier to get a hold of. And they're so much easier to pull them out of the um, out of their compost. So 
So it's just a, a little group of twos and threes. I'm never mean with me bedding. I always like to see them in little clumps rather than just single scraggy little plants. Um, and I find that they grow much better together if they've got a little companion. <laughs> companion planting. Well, there we are. That's the first. So as I say, I just work my way along the, along the rows. Twos and threes every time. You know, you don't have to go daft. Um, that's why I saw about six or seven packets of these. I like to have plenty of them. Um, it gets a little bit sticky as you work your way along. That's why I like to use a little pair of scissors just to, just to break the soil first. Um, and what I like to do with these, I like to repot them a little bit deeper. So when you pull them, actually from your compost, and I like to sink the roots down at just a, about a quarter of an inch, just a below your flowering stem, and uh, you'll find out they root away much better. There we are. Get good. Oh, your compost should be nice and moist. And all these will need. Is I'll drop them in a bath of water and I finish here. Uh, let, it, let the compost get nice and soft or get well soaked. And they should be great. It'll go straight up the lot in tomorrow and they'll be put on the top shelf of the polytunnel. No heat. As I say, I've had very little heat down here in this greenhouse uh, down home. Um, so what I don't want to do is to add more heat to them. Uh, they just go away really slow. Now these have got to be in a seed trace for about, um, I think it's about five weeks now, six weeks. So what I would suggest to you is, is when you put a seed in, Write it down on a bit of paper, or write it down in a diary, keep a diary of when you sow your seed. And then if it is early, the following year, you've got something to fall back onto. You can either bring your sowing forward, or you can delay your sowing your by a couple of days or a week or two. Um, but that's the only way you learn. As to, and especially depending on what part of the country you're on. I mean, if you're down the south, you'll be doing the same. A good fortnight earlier than what we do up the northeast here. Um, as I say, it's been the last couple of months. It's been absolutely warm. It's been there uh, just on the zero uh, freezing up here. But uh, with this little bit of heat we've got on the greenhouse, uh, and, and the temperatures have only been 45 through the evening. So you know it's not hot, but it's it's keeping the place frost free. And to me. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I haven't forced any of my plants whatsoever this year. Even my onions, my big show onions, my big leeks, none of them have been forced. They've just been kept at a nice steady temperature. Um, maybe next year I'll, t I'll turn the heat up on certain things. If I want to grow for the shows, I'll have to have a bit of heat on. Um, especially my dahlias. My dahlias are only just starting to bud now. Uh, and really they should have been on the heat bench in December. But uh, as I say, with uh, with having a bit accident, everything was just thrown into chaos, and uh, I've never never really pulled back from it. But <clears throat> as I say, there's always next year. I'm not that worried. I'm quite happy just to go tick on for this year, get everything ready, and then next year we can start again nice and fresh. Because uh, it's not that long away. I've been up there. I've been looking at my leeks. That's for seed for this year, and they're absolutely great. And the garlics that are put in for seed, I've been checking them today. Absolutely fantastic. So I will be doing a little bit of work to them um, for the next couple of days. Couple of, tamp down. Don't be soft with them. And there we are. That's a perfect tray of um, <coughs> Swan River Daisy. Now we'll get set. <coughs> we'll get set um, tonight in just a tray of water. And then I'll carry on with them tomorrow. Uh, but 
all your bedding, uh, I do all my bedding exactly the same way, not a problem. Get them in the multi cell trays, give them a good drink of water, and get them up into the light. That's what they want. Um, nice and cool, uh, just frost free, that's all you need, and uh, they will go away. Oh, I've got a full tray there at the uh, center area, and then there's spot plants there, just a silver leafed. Now I dot them in between me. me me uh, geraniums and me basilisies, just a nice silver relief plant. But uh, there's a full pot of them that grow really well. It's only just cool in here, as I say, 50 55. I'm never in, in, in any hurry to get them grown too too fast. As I say, if they were too big and I had to pot them on early, I would have been snookered because it would mean taking them up into a cool polytunnel uh, and then they would have just suffered. But if you get your timing right, as I say, that I'm potting don't miss. Majority of me potting off, I'll get getting done this week and next week. I've even got seeds to sow tomorrow. I've still got asters to sow, I've got some more marigolds to sow, sweet peas. My autumn sowing sweet peas are absolutely fantastic. They're up like that now, they're beautiful up the top garden. I will be planting them out in about a fortnight's time. They're getting hardened off now in the polytunnel and uh, they're just beautiful. But uh, I will do a video on them soon. Uh, if you've been following some of my videos, you, you'll know exactly um, what I'm on about. Uh, and in New subscribers, I think I probably picked up about four or five fair uh, last week, but welcome anyway to the plot. And uh, I hope you're taking away a little bit of information that's going to help you in your own gardens. But um, I'm going to plot it in there. I've got these, the last of these tomatoes to pot up, and I've got about another three trees of Swan River Daisy to get through, so it's about another five of these um, multi cell there, cell trees to fill up. But I'll get them done the night. Um, my brother's picking us up the morning to go up the allotment, so I'll get it right up in the car. I'll get the plants up nice and safe, up in the light where they belong, and uh, get them ready for the, the middle of May uh, for planting out. Because uh, at the end of the day, that's what, that's what we all look forward to. Sowing my seed, getting a good plant, good healthy plant that's going to last. Uh, get in the garden, disease free, and you should have any no problem whatsoever. It should run away, and you get a nice bit of flower for you, for your allotment or for your garden throughout the summer months. But uh, that's the aim of us anyway. Just go nice and slowly. I'll give you a little look at them um, at these just before I shut off. Now if you remember a couple of weeks ago I cooked some cuttings, uh, the croissants. Now normally I'll be taking my cuttings in December, uh, early January on a on a hot bench, but I know I'll put the bench on this year. And there we are. Perfect. I've got the uh, Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve first class cuttings. Easiest pie, and all you've had is a little bit of spray over, a bit of calamine, and uh, they're fine. I will be potting them up next week, so I'll make another video on them. I'll do a video with the croissants and the dahlias next week, because a lot of my dahlias are just starting to shoot away. As I say, they're, they're a lot later this year than what I would have liked. If I had I put them on the heat bench in January, they would have been, I would have had cuttings now when the cuttings would have been rooted, ready for the shows. But um, once I made the decision in January not to show, yeah, I knew it was going to be way behind. And so I thought, well, it's pointless putting the stuff on the heat beds then. Um, keep them off and just let them grow away nice and slow, which I have done. I've got chewers up the garden. They're just starting to shoot away now. They've just been a frost-free greenhouse. So hopefully by the end of this month, I'll be able to take some cuttings. Stacks of time, you know me. I never have any hurry to do anything. Um, if I take cuttings at the end of this month in April, have them rooted in mid-May, and they'll be ready for planting out in the middle of June, which is up here in the northeast. Dahlias, as I say, very frost there, tender, so you never want to plant them out any earlier than the first, second week in June. So my cuttings will be, uh, they'll be well rooted. What I do want to do is, I know people, a lot of people are put off by dahlias, by the storage of them. So what I'll do at the end of this year, I'll show you a neat little trick that a lot of the... Um, the nurseries used for dahlias, and it's a it's pot grown tubers. How to grow a pot tuber? So that's what I'll do with some of the cuttings. Once I get established, we'll take some new cuttings, and I'll show you how to grow a pot tuber. And a nice little pot, so you can overwinter it. Doesn't take up too much room. I know when I dug my dahlias up there uh, beginning last year, and some more real monsters, and people are thinking, I'll never have the room to store them. You can get a as a way around that, but I'll show you that there uh, in a, another video at the back end of this year. How to grow a pot tuber. And it's the same with the croissants. You don't have to have them in big buckets like we do, big buckets. You can grow them in a little pot 
And so what you end up with at the end of the year is a stool. You know it's in a little pot, it's still a little stool. And you put it in your greenhouse and you'll get cut and so much exactly the same. Or you can just carry the plant over for the following, following year. But that's, um, that's all for next week. For the time being, I'm going to crack on these tomorrow as we focus too dark. It's uh, quarter past five up here. Northeast is still, as I say, the rain's just stopped. So I thought I'd come down, get this video off, um, get cracking, just to show you what I'm doing. Um, quite a few tomatoes over the back of me. I think I'm up, up till now, I've got four trays up there. So that's 80, and I've got two lots down here. I've got about 100 tomatoes potted off. Um, but I give away loads, and there's loads of people coming to my allotment to the plot, looking for tomato plants. Um, so I think I've got another couple of hundred to get through yet. I just sowed another lot of seed last week. I sowed a, a small tree of American and a small tree of Spanish. And them trees that I sowed last week, I'll be using because I want to I want to bring the American ones away as cold as possible, just nice and slow with them. Uh, and I want to because uh, this is only the second day I've grown them, so I want to try and get them. Um, it's a nice, strong, sturdy little plant, uh, and then hopefully we'll get a, a cracking crop. But we've got a good got a good crop from last year. But uh, it's just the foliage got a little bit um, giddy for me, throwing out too many side shoots. So I'm just going to hope to slow it down this year and get a nice strong little plant and hopefully we'll get a better crop. And I'm only going to crop with three trusses because I'm going to grow it on the bench. So um, there's different ways around everything. Um, but uh, yeah, as I say, thanks for watching. Share if you want. Subscribe, we'll love it. Um, just welcome to the plot, all you that have uh, just signed up, and we'll we'll see you again next week. We'll definitely be at the plot next week, so we'll have a look around the polytunnels, um, and we'll uh, I'll just show you how many strawberries are coming on. I know you're going to be amazed by them. I certainly was this morning. Um, and we'll give them, this is only the second week I've had a feed of uh, the old nettle juice. So uh, as Roger says, we better start drinking it because judging by the strawberries, they're romping away. It may do us the world of good. But uh, I'll get round to that one of these days, trying it. Uh, but for the time being, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon. Okay, bye for now.